Welcome back. You are watching Worldview. Many thanks for staying with us. So we are still on the presidential age limits and term limits and uh, helping us discuss that is Abel Oyeyo from the Centre of African Progress. Thank you once again for Thank joining you. us. So we were still on the remarks made there by uh, Paul Kagame and uh, Constantly, we've had even uh, the, some of the European governments say that democracy needs to prevail in Rwanda. But uh, Kagame says, the people have chosen me, the people have decided, the people actually asked me to run again. So what democracy are you people talking about? Now, the, the problem is, of course, um, guys know what's going on in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Rwanda does not have uh, freedoms, the freedoms we enjoy here in Kenya and so many other places. So guys can be scared into voting in a particular way, mm -hmm. and then you know the results from that kind of election are sold to the world. So for you, it's fear. It, that is it. It's what it is. In Uganda, there is a quest to change the constitution uh, mm -hmm. for to do away with the age limit uh, for presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. We all know that President uh, Museveni will be turning 76 in 2021, the election year, and their age limit currently in the constitution is 75. We all know what that means, Abel. Yeah, of course it means now Museveni wants to be president for, for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's, it is unfortunate. Uh, Africans, I think, expect the outside world, I'm talking about the, West, the, the Western world, to come and pressure our leaders to accept uh, democratic ideals, but I think it's our duty as Africans, the rest of Africa, of course, mm -hmm. like Kenya, to put pressure on people like Museveni to begin accepting democracy in their countries. Uh, so the problem is we've turned a blind eye to Rwanda, to Uganda, and most likely it's going to spread. You saw what happened in, uh, in uh, Burundi a few days ago. So it is unfortunate, but it's happening. So you're likely to see Museveni extend his stay in office. Mm -hmm. So whoever was born, of course, when Museveni was around 55 years old, has, you know, gotten to his maybe midlife, still seeing the, the same, same president. president. What does that do to us? Look at Uganda, look at Zimbabwe, look at Equatorial Guinea. And as you say, we don't do it ourselves. We expect the foreigners to come and do it for us. What does that do to us as a people in the uh, continent? Of course, there's what we call lack of uh, diversity in terms of uh, leadership. When you have diverse leadership, of course, uh, you get some, d some, some benefits. As a president, you get, let's say you get 10 years as a president and you have some strengths. So within that 10 year period, you do whatever you can do then, you know, you, you, you walk out and someone else comes in with a different kind of strength. Now, Obama came in as president in the US, served his, uh, you know, eight years. He did whatever, whatever he was able to do, mm -hmm. moved out. Trump has come in. So there is what you call the people given a chance to experience different, you know, uh, inputs from different leaders. Now, when you are president who stays in power for 40 years, the country is denied talent, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if Museveni could have, you know, paved way for someone like Bezid, you know, could be seeing something different in mm -hmm. uh, Uganda. Now, from 2000 all the way to 2017, we have Kagame in, in office in Rwanda. And I expect him, of course, to win by landslide mm -hmm. in the election that is to be held in August. That is another seven years. So Akidu was born in uh, 2000, has been able to see the same president mm. up to 2017, so and it's likely to go on all the way to 2034. So that is, it, it is unfortunate. You get from zero years to 34 years seeing the same man as your president. Those, there are so many guys who can come on board and offer different, you know, packets in terms of ideas to the people. So those it, guys are blocked out. And, and as this happens, um, even those who have decided that they want to be presidents for life are even grooming their own people. In Uganda, we know the wife is in the cabinet. We know the son is, uh, has a top job as well. Zimbabwe, we know the wife is, uh, there's word that he's being groomed. In Equatorial Guinea, the son is the vice president. Yeah, um, again, it goes back to what we expect as Africans. Instead of doing it ourselves, we want the Western world to come and help us do it. Now, the few countries in Africa which practice, of course, democracy need to to show, to, to lead the way in number one, criticizing the, leader, the leaders want to do that. And of course, it has to be uh, active and a bit uh, forceful. So I think I want to blame the African Union for being a toothless bulldog. The watch as all this is happening and they're doing nothing. So it is a problem. It is a problem. And, and I think it's uh, the 21st century and we're seeing it happen. And it's, it's, it's very it's unfortunate. Sad.
Yeah. So when uh, the Rwandese come here, like let's say the uh, Rwandese ambassador to Kenya and begin spreading lies about the presence of democracy in uh, Rwanda, it is unfortunate. I, d I don't think such guys have to be given audience. There's no democracy in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's so what, what, is the, is. what would be the way forward for countries like this, the ones we have mentioned? Um, I think the citizens need to be empowered, not just by African countries which practice democracy by the, but by the Western world. Now, if we can take the example of Kagame, Kagame is, I think, given a lot of support from the West. So, of course, he did uh, some commendable work during the 1994-1998 period of trying to put up a government and putting Rwanda together. But I think his time has come to just pave the way. So the Western world that supports him in terms of uh, aid and all that, should stop. They have to warn him. If you're not going to allow democracy to thrive, mm -hmm. we cannot keep on supporting you. Because, again, you realize Rwanda depends so much on foreign aid. It is a landlocked country. It, it is densely populated. So without, without that kind of aid from the Western world, Rwanda cannot stand. So they can use it as a reason to actually bring democracy to Rwanda. But before we talk about the foreign countries, do you feel like African countries look out for one another and try to see the best come out of each country? Or we just all turn a blind eye? If, if it works for you, let it work for you. Or we all have the same sins, so we really don't have... I think that is what it is. It's, yeah. a, it's about equity. When you come to equity, you have to come with clean hands. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a case of... Uh, we don't have guys who can stand up on the moral high ground and say, hey, Kagame, get out of office. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, all these guys have their problems, they have their shortcomings. But I think we have a few, like the Kenyan president, you know, I think our democracy has matured. And yes. He, yes. So Uru can tell Kagame, stop what you're doing, it's not acceptable. Because if Uru gets to lose the election, I expect him to concede. He's decent enough to do that. If he gets to win a second time, I don't expect him to try to change the Kenyan constitution to be president for life. So he can criticize Kagame and tell him, hey, allow democracy to do what? To sprout and thrive in Rwanda. He can do the same to Mugabe. So we need these few guys who have embraced democracy to come out and pressure these dictators to just accept But, but how is that possible with the kind of interests that are there among African countries and the ties? Well, at the end of the day, you have to focus on the long-term benefits of, the, of democracy, not just to one country, but to, all of the, to the entire continent. Uh, we have examples of what democracy can do to a people, to, to a country, and I think uh, we can see where Kenya's come from and where we are where today. So it's all about focusing on the long-term gains, the long-term benefits of democracy instead mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what maybe you stand to benefit in the short term. Yeah. All right, and we'll definitely be bringing you later on some of the things, uh, views uh, that Ambassador Kimonyo had uh, concerning, because these are the same questions we, I, I raised when I was having a conversation with him. But Abel, as you say, it looks like some of the African countries continue to be in an authoritarian kind of role. Yeah, so um, that is the problem. And of course, uh, as we move forward, uh, the number of Africans, of course, who get exposed mm. to education, to uh, uh, information, is rising. Now, the unfortunate part is we access more information, but does not help us to get rid of authoritarianism mm. or, or dictatorships. Because uh, earlier on, the perception was people get informed and then they push away dictatorships mm. and, you know, they protest and demonstrate and get in more accommodating and uh, democratic governments. But it's unfortunate. Uh, but I think it's not going on for it's not going to go on for, for long, uh, because you know people get tired, and uh, there's an extent beyond beyond which you cannot push uh, a human being. Mm -hmm. So in, in Uganda, I think that is a ticking time bomb. The Ugandans will come out at some point and protest, mm -hmm. and uh, the Rwandese, of course. The reign of fear will not go on forever at some do you, point. Do you think the opposition in, say, Rwanda, in Uganda... There's no opposition in Rwanda. There is no opposition in Rwanda. In fact, all the guys who decided to mm. stand up against Kagame uh, had to take off because of intimidation and the threats of death. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, some of these guys were followed to places where they went to hide. And when he was killed in South Africa sometimes back, mm -hmm. Kayumba Nyamwasa was shot and he almost died. Mm -hmm. Another guy had to take off to the U.S., in the U.S. as we speak today. And, you know, it's because of 
the kind of security they get in foreign countries that they're able to come out and say Rwanda is not a democracy, it is a dictatorship. Okay, let's look at, let, let's see what uh, the ambassador, uh, Rwanda ambassador to Kenya, Ambassador James Kimonyo, had to say on some of the views about whether Rwanda is a democratic country. Let's take a look at that clip, then we have Abel respond to that. In 2003, 2010, 2010, 2015, people decided to amend the constitution. These are the people of Rwanda, including me, who is seated here. This is the choice I made. Now, if someone else from somewhere who is entitled to his views or her views can say anything, but me as Rwandan, I know what I need. We all know what we have gone through. We know what we want. And that's why we are entitled, entitled to shaping the destiny of, 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 of our country. And so, as much as we don't want to interfere with anybody's political process, we would request our friends. The other day, so. Uh, this young man Abel, in this studio saying President Kagame is a dictator and he did not even explain why. You see, the other day when we were entering into the uh, referendum process, mm -hmm. 2015, yeah. I came in this studio and as I was preparing for my interview, I was wondering about this thing called term limits. Just a quick check mm -hmm. through such engines, then I checked how is the term, term limit defined in the European context, for instance, and Africa? I was comparing the two. And you'll be surprised, and I'm giving you this, this homework, you go and check <laughs> how many countries in Europe have term limits. How many? More than 90%, more than, and I stand to be challenged, more than 90% of European countries do not have term limits. So do you feel like they would have wanted to <laughs> and surprising something so they are not doing enough? So yeah, enough absolutely, absolutely. All right, so those were the views there by Ambassador, Rwandan Ambassador to Kenya, James Kimonyo. Abel, you have been mentioned <laughs> uh, because, of course, uh, you've seen some of the views you've had on Rwanda. We'll let you respond to that before we wrap up. Well, that is laughable. You know, <clears throat> it's unfortunate when someone like uh, the ambassador can come here and tell us lies. He needs to understand Kenya is democratic, and he cannot tell us Rwanda is democratic because Rwanda is not like Kenya. In Kenya, you can express yourself. In Rwanda, you cannot. In Kenya, the, someone, uh, someone like me, just a citizen, can criticize the president. In Rwanda, you cannot. The Kenyan media is free. In Rwanda, it's not. And, of course, that is an ambassador who was appointed by the president, and he has to come here and yap in defense of the president. Mm -hmm. He's the president's crony. So I don't blame him. He's trying to defend his job. Mm -hmm. The truth is known. When the referendum was held, observers from the European Union and the US came out and said it was not, you know, they were not allowed to watch what was going on. So he can come here and say all he wants, but we know the, tru the, tr the, tr the says, truth. He says that just like they don't interfere with other people's political processes, theirs shouldn't be interfered Africa, with. We're Africans, all and right. Africa is going to be our business. So when Rwanda, when our brothers and sisters in Rwanda are not free, we're going to say it. All right, Abel. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. Thank Abel Ayeyo from the Center for African Progress. Let's now take a look at what else is uh, making headlines on our international papers. Trixingado, take us through that. Thank you, Akisa. So let's take a look at what's making headlines across the world. And